Welcome back to the Shine Within podcast. I'm your host, Gina Kunadian, and I have someone extraordinary here, and I'm so excited to have her. Her name is Sunshine. <laughs> Perfect for this podcast. She is a psychic medium, soul healer, spiritual advisor, high peace priestess, and a recovering alcoholic, and founder of Sunshine Readings. Her passion is helping others learn how to step into their shadows so they can uncover their own magic and psychic gifts needed to remove any energetic blocks to their soul's enlightening enlightenment. <laughs> I don't have my glasses on today. <laughs> she is the creatrix of Illuminate, <laughs> the unschool of magic, magical psychic arts. This transformational membership includes Sunshine's divine inspired gifts in seven different monthly workshops and one-on-one -on -one access to her. In addition, in addition to owning and operating Sunshine Reading, Sunshine is also an award-winning software product manager and business operations expert that is helping corp corpora corporations <laughs> revolutionize their internal structure and processes in order to adopt a more innovative culture. In her spare time, you will find Sunshine dancing, cooking, painting, and hanging out with her five kitties oh, in the suburbs of Detroit, Michigan. Thank you so much, Sunshine, for coming onto my show today. Oh, I'm so excited to be here, Gina. And, you know, finding people that are talking about sobriety or being just alcohol free is amazing. And I love this. And I'm so excited to be here. I'm excited too, because I wanted to ask so many questions about your gifts, because I am just starting to tap into my gifts. So we were just talking that I'm starting to my body responds to certain things that people say that gets me all worked up and excited. Um, my hearing, I'm hearing like, <laughs> and I've always heard that and people always tell me, oh, that means someone's talking bad about you. Um, <laughs> that was like a biggest rumor. <clears throat> so I would just love to hear your story and how you're able to tap into your gifts. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's great. And feel free if like I say something and you want me to elaborate, let me know. But I, I, my belief is every human being has these gifts, right? We we all have a sixth sense. Um, it shows up to us all in various different ways. You, you know, before we even started, you were saying the goosebumps, you know, those tingles throughout the body. Um, you know, and for me, I didn't know as a child that, that that's what these gifts were, right? Um, but I have, I've had them since I was a kid. Uh, and it's interesting. I've got to share this little tidbit because they're popping into mine. Uh, I'm watching some story yesterday uh, and this girl's talking about um, uh, the, 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 like the host is talking about how uh, Lorraine Warren, who is a very famous clairvoyant um, paranormal investigator. When she was young in school, she could see auras and she thought everyone saw auras. And so like, that was just how, that was the normal world. And so it's very similar to me, like growing up, I could feel energy. I could feel spirit. I could see spirit when I was real young. Um, I, I also, one of the psychic abilities, if you have strong enough, you can also mind read. Telepathy is, is something that is. And so as a child, I had a lot of mind reading that would get me in trouble right? Because I would know things and people didn't, you know, now I, I appeared like a know-it-all, right? So, you know, our gifts show up in all sorts of various different ways. Um, a lot of folks that are highly, highly gifted are also highly sensitive or empathic. So they are literally receptive to the emotional energies around people. Um, and so even as a child, I've been an introvert growing up, like I'm, I'm very kind of much a I enjoy being a bit more of a recluse because of that, right? Lots of energy can wipe me right out or send me into like chaotic spirals. And I won't realize until like halfway through a day that I've been filled with anxiety all day. And I'm like, why? What am I like? Why am I so anxious? I have nothing in my life to be anxious about. And then I'm like, oh my God, I was hanging out with Susan, right? Like she, oh, wow, right? Um, so yeah, our, our gifts can manifest and show themselves in all sorts of different ways. Um, but I didn't know about them. And I have realized in my sobriety that my alcoholism was used to dampen them. It allowed me to go into social situations. It allowed me to be around, you know, people that maybe I I didn't feel were right, but I, I was supposed to be around, right? 
um, it, it allowed me to, uh, you know, frankly, quiet my head at night. So I used to drink, you know, to make sure I could quote unquote fall asleep. I mean, yeah, any, any person that's ever drank before bed and woken up with a hangover knows that does not work. Um, so yeah, uh, <laughs> there's all sorts of various things that I've explored around my alcoholism, but that is one of them is how much it was used to quiet the voices, deaden my like physical senses, um, stop the pictures from throwing, you know, showing up in my head or, you know, uh, distract me from the thoughts that other people were having, right? Because I was too concerned with when's my next drink or um, how, am, how am I going to handle this situation uh, if I can't drink? Yes. And thank you for sharing that because you do bring up a good point. And I think that's why I drank as well, because I felt like I didn't belong to this world. I don't feel like I belong on earth. Seriously, <laughs> just to be real, like I don't belong here. I, I would consider myself an alien, <laughs> seriously, because everything that I was thinking of, people, I was told not to do. And there were just too many rules, too many conditions, too many things that were was holding me down. And so that's why I drank to mask myself because I wanted to fit in to the in crowd. Everyone else was drinking. So why don't I drink? Everyone else was smoking weed. Why don't I smoke? Everyone else was doing ecstasy. Why don't I do ecstasy? Everyone else was doing cocaine. Okay, I'm going to do cocaine. So that way I was able to fit in uh, because I remember I didn't start drinking until I was maybe 22 years old. But then, I mean, after that, then it just went all, of course, downhill. And then I stopped when I was like maybe 33 or so. Uh, but it was a journey. But through that process, like, I was still experiencing my gifts, but those gifts were just bringing in evil entities inside my home, inside myself, inside. It was just a mess. And it got to a point where, like, think my lights were flickering. You know, I was getting scratches, bruises. Uh, I had like both of my legs were bruised tremendously. It was like a horrific situation. Oh, I would hear growls, right? It was crazy. Yeah. Oh my God. You have no idea what you just validated for me. I, so I've got to, I've got to, I know we, we didn't talk. So like, I got to tell you the story, right? We talk about gifts, you know, and, and uh, I, I have a client first time talked to me, I don't know, months ago, probably three or four months ago, she was concerned that there was a demonic entity around her son. And so I gave her some advice. I read some energy and so on and so forth. Well, I got an email Saturday morning from her. And uh, she said, something's going on. It, it's gotten worse. You know, the family went, we're on a 30 day vacation. My husband's on sabbatical. I don't know what's going on. I actually saw the demon last night in a vision, you know, and so I'm like, oh my God. So I asked for some time. I said, give me some time. Let me talk to my guides. Let me see what else. So, I mean, a little bit of a long story, but it's so pertinent. So once again, our gifts, like you have to follow them. You've got to like, just trust that the universe, the divine, the creator, whatever you want to call it is always leading you down the right path. So that's Saturday morning, Saturday evening, I'm sitting there with my partner on the couch, my niece, and we're like, let's watch a movie. And so I, I, I flip open, you know, we're going to go search for a movie. We're going to search. And um, we've been, you, you mentioned aliens. We've been like watching a lot of alien and UFO stuff lately. And so I click on paranormal and my partner goes, Hey, what if we watch the conjuring? I've always wanted to watch that. Have you seen that? And I was like, I don't even know what that's about. And he's like, Oh, well, it's about, you know, Ed and Lorraine Warren. And, you know, so, and it's like, so I, I, he doesn't know about this email from this client in the morning right? He has no clue. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I don't say anything. I was like to my niece, niece, do you want to watch this? She's like, well, it's scary. I don't know. I said, well, up to you, totally up to you. And in my head, I say, if we watch this, if she says she wants, there's something in that movie for me to see. Right? So she says, yes. Lo and behold, we watch this movie. Okay. Um, and I'm, I, I know the exact part that I was meant to see. And so the next e morning I email the woman, I give her all of this insight and, and, um, she emails back like, thank you, my God, you know, this worked. I'm going to, you know, she's, she's just ecstatic last night. I'm sitting there having dinner with my partner and I'm telling him this, like, this is what happens. And somehow or another, he reminds me that we're both in recovery, right? He's got like six years. I've, you know, got, um, almost four he reminds me, he goes, remember how we were going to paint our drinking demons? 
And all of a sudden, I'm like, oh my God. The picture she sent me that was an example of the demon she saw literally looked like exactly like my drinking demon. Wow. And I finally, it hits me, the thought comes through and my guides tell me, I've got to go to this client and say, I, and ask the question, is, is your husband an alcoholic? Right. Because that's what hit me as we sat there and had dinner and my partner reminded me was that, oh my God, I think this little, this young boy is being impacted from living in an alcoholic household. Wow. And this demon is, is true. I mean, is it's true has just, and that's why I'm saying you just validated that for me. So thank you, Gina, that just your example of like, you were feeling that poltergeist activity as you were abusing, you know, drugs and alcohol, as your vibration was at that low state, you just validated that for me. So my God, I mean, yeah. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. I'm glad I could help. Yes. I mean, it's, it was crazy. And I mean, alcohol, alcohol comes from the word alcohol, which is like the Arabic word, meaning like a ghost eating spirits or something like that. <laughs> yeah. That one. Yeah. Or something like that. And then that's why they call it spirits. I, I'm guessing that's why they call them booze, <laughs> like boo, <laughs> like the ghost. I, that was a guess, but spirits and, you know, uh, because literally, people change like my so my youngest son's father um we were broken up a long time ago but he remembers when i was heavily drinking that he's and he sees auras actually he can see auras that's one of his gifts he saw my face transform like i had shifted into some other being and he said i had sunken dark eyes and i just looked like scary even the time when we were like just laying down like this is I was also still heavily in my drinking he just saw this demon not even myself but this demon and so I know I was being possessed because I was I went to jail for it you know there's a lot of different activities that I had done that caused me to go to jail but it wasn't me because I feel like I'm a loving spirit trust me I have my moments I'm a human being here on earth <laughs> and I have especially as a female I go through some emotions here um, but I've learned to react differently now that I stopped drinking. I've learned to be more grateful. I've learned to not be so selfish, but think about others before myself. And I'm such a giver and I've always been like that, but I swear that alcohol really created a monster inside me. And now that I don't have that issue, <laughs> I wanna help people in the transformation. So everyone has a potential. And I feel like a lot of people feel like, there's no hope, you know, what do I do? Well, yeah. no, I, I, I mean, I, and I, I think I, and I love that you actually are, you know, we're kind of talking about some of the gifts and the psych, these psychic abilities, because let's be real, right? If you would have recognized if your 20 year old self, Gina would have said, oh my God, I'm a psychic. Or, you know, um, I know some folks, I'm a witch, right? Like I'm, I'm this magical being that has all of these superpowers um, and it's making me feel crazy and weird and awkward and strange. What do I do about this, right? If you would have had this like epiphany or this insight at that point, you may never have dampened all of that through alcohol and drugs. Right, you're absolutely right. right. Mm-hmm. Um, I myself, you know, I'm, the, I'm also the, um, the child of an alcoholic. I grew up in an alcoholic household. I, my story does not start at 22. My story starts at eight years old. Mm -hmm. My story of my, my drinking starts at eight years old, right? After my first communion, I was raised, um, Roman Catholic and realizing the, the taste of that, that feeling of that warm, the warmth that that wine gave me, I can still remember walking up to the, to the person that handed me that cup and the way that it felt the first time. And after that, I would go search out my father's half finished rum and Cokes mm. to feel that same experience. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Because that it just numbs us inside. And then we just kind of forget about the gifts that we were given. Oh yeah. I mean, it, it numbs us. It distracts us. You know, it does this temporary moment of quieting, but you know, all that quiet does is like 
remove all of the answers, the guidance and the love from like, you know, our higher selves, our higher powers, right? It's like a complete, I, I always laugh. I'm like, how, I was like, you do realize that they put alcohol on like wounds to kill anything that may literally sicken us and kill us, but yet you are pouring it willingly into your body. Into right. Your yeah, totally. And I always want to, I want to ask you, what, what are some solutions? How can we help the, the women, the men, whomever, who want, who are struggling from their addiction just to overcome it? What are some practices? You know, um, I, and uh, I definitely um, used AA. My partner did not use AA. Many people don't use AA, but I will tell you that there is one thing that I really appreciate about AA, and that is first admitting that you have that problem, right? Like, uh, I don't know about you. I've, I've, I haven't listened to your story, but like, it took me almost a year to get to the point that I admitted I was an alcoholic and I still had a relapse after that before mm -hmm. I, 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 you know, I finally quit. Right. Like, so the very, very first thing is like, we are, I, I love that you said you're human because we are human. We're not perfect. Right. And so admitting that like, yeah, you have a problem. It's not treating you well. It's not serving you well. Um, you know, for me, I had physical symptoms show up. I had the shakes. I was, you know, I, I'm like, I had a corporate job. I, I never had anything suffer. I was like, you know, quote unquote, a, um, you know, white collared alcoholic that on the outside, nothing was wrong right? Mm -hmm. Nothing was wrong, but I was miserable. I was sad. I was in poor sleep. My health was deteriorating. Um, you know, I, I was riddled with anxiety, right? Um, and just afraid, afraid of living, mm -hmm. afraid of making a mistake. Um, so the first thing is just admitting. And then to me, the second thing is be willing to ask for help, right? Like you are literally a sobriety coach. The number one thing that I, I have realized in my recovery, you cannot recover alone. Like alcohol isolates you. It's a lonely, lonely path. It is a path of one. Life is meant to be a path with many. So if you can recognize and admit to yourself, no one else, you don't got to go tell anybody else. I'm not telling you to, you know, buy a billboard and put it up and, you know, tell everybody at work and you don't got to wear a badge and there's no t-shirt, there's no hat and a club you've got to join. Um, but admitting to yourself first and then being willing to ask for help from someone else that has done it because every recovery journey is going to be different. Mm -hmm. What may have worked for one person may not work for you but don't, don't stop. Exactly. Stop. Yeah. Cause the relapses people are like, Oh, but I relapse. See, that's part of the process. That is part of the process. You are going to relapse. I mean, there is very few people. I don't even think I know anybody actually who never relapsed. I mean, no. that's unheard of. So it's very common. So I always want to tell people, Hey, don't beat yourself up. Hey, welcome to the, welcome to the club. You're in the right path. If you're relapsing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so I said it's it is part of the process, but you know, as long as you're pushing and trying, as because your your goal is that you want to recover, and that's all that matters. That's what you're headed for. So it's in your head already, and it's just a matter of just taking that action, doing those practices, and practice and practice, and like getting rid of those friends that are your drinking buddies. Start hanging around with people that are you know maybe in recovery as well, or have the same mindset and goal set as you do different things like that. I, you know, I, I, I've heard this story over and over, and I would imagine that you very well have sh shared this. I look back now, almost four years, there isn't a single person in my life that I hang with, out with on a regular basis now that I was hanging out with 10 years ago. That's not by coincidence. That's by design. That's because these are the people that love me, support me. They believe, you know, they, they accept me for who I am, my weirdness, my pink hair, my witchy ways, my like esoteric, like my staring off into space and talking to things that aren't there. <laughs> It's so funny because I do talk to myself and it's funny. I refer to myself as we, <laughs> so it'll just come out. Like, I don't know where it comes from. Like, oh yeah, we just, I'm like, oh, I just, <laughs> I don't know. And I'm like, okay, I, I, I refer myself as we sometimes because I don't know. I don't feel like it's just me. Like I have a cheerleader now, you know, 
rooting me on. It used to be the enemy it's telling me negative and lies and negative things about myself and others that are thinking neg negatively about me. But it wasn't it wasn't true. That was the enemy speaking. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I literally for me, one of my biggest things was personifying it into the drinking demon. And the way I explained it is that drinking demon had one job and that was to put alcohol like get me to sip. They did they, they, day in and day out. And when he punched out, there was another one right there. That's their whole purpose in their existence was to get me to drink right and so that was to me like that's the little thing getting you to all that shitty things that they're saying to you all that negative self-talk that it, it chatters away in your head and the moment you you say i'm not going to allow you and you start to recognize you do have a team that's on your side you have a higher self you have mm -hmm. guardian angels you have ancestors you have all sort i call it my spirit army right yeah yeah all behind you right and when mm, Yes, we do. We have we have support system. If we don't see it, they're still there. <laughs> and that's what's hard for people to believe. Like, you know, it's hard for them to accept a higher power. They're just like, I don't believe in God because or the universe or anything because they cannot see it. You know, and I remember for for my experience, like I didn't grow up religious. I didn't grow up sp spiritual. Um, I mean, I'd heard of Jesus, of course, you know, I heard of Buddha, of course, I've heard of all the gods, of course, but I never really paid attention to them until I got to the point of despair and I needed help because I know I'm like, you know what, I'm done. I'm done. I can't do this by myself. You know, I had relapsed five times already. I'm just like, I'm literally needed to drink in order to drive. I literally need to drink so I can perform at work and my health is deteriorating and I just look jaundice and just disgusting and felt disgusting. So I remember calling out, I said, God, I need your help. Please help me. I cannot do this alone. Went to the hospital, like within a week, pancreatitis, you need to stay here, detox. And chaplain came, prayed over me. I went to actually a faith-based hospital that, that time. And then I was just starting to like learn about like Christianity and like Jesus more and just trying to, that's where I felt like I was being led, you know, cause like everybody's path is different. You know, not everyone's gonna go to Jesus, you know, and that's okay. <laughs> uh, so you have to do whatever your spirit aligns to you, whatever is true to yourself. And so, but for me, it was Jesus. So I went to church and I, I was, I said this in my other podcast, like I went to church and I swear, I, as soon as I, but let me back up. I had to drink before I went inside church. I am not going to lie. I was drinking in the parking lot. It, that's just how it was. But at least I went inside church and then the Holy Spirit or some spirit took over me. I was bawling, just crying and crying. I'm like, where am I crying? I just came inside and didn't know what's going on. But that is like, that's my, that was my transformation. Like right there, like, boom, okay, I need to be here. So that's what I was doing, going every Sunday. You know, I was away from my children at the time they were taken away from me. I was away. I was already not married. I was already separated from my husband. It was just me, myself, and God at that point. You know, so I was there. And from there, I was starting to serve. And then I started like meeting different people. I was going to Bible study. I was doing this. And then I was doing that. I was like, wow, this is a completely different life. And then I got a mentor for mindset because my mind was all messed up from like sexual trauma and drinking alcohol and abusive boyfriends growing up and everything. And then just like, there is another side. You do need to experience. Sometimes when you are experiencing that darkness, like your quote there, I love it, uh, that I saw, <laughs> you do see the light. And let's talk a little bit about that quote. I love it. It says, only when we know our own darkness can we sit in the darkness with others. And that's by um, Pema Cho children yeah she's a nun uh and i mean there's all sorts of amazing quotes that i could probably go but like this is and i think this is even why you're doing what you're doing right like because if we haven't sat in that shit and that muck and that just like feeling like the world is collapsing around us and and have not felt the wonderment that can come in like sobriety and recovery and spiritual enlightenment. If we if we've never been down that path, right, we're not able to be of service. Right. We're not able to help people and say, like, there is another way. There's a way where happiness is an everyday occurrence. Right. There is a way where anxiety will not plague you day by day. There is a way where you will wake up grateful for all of the beautiful people that are surrounding you and supporting you in life. 
Absolutely. And it just gets better and better. And then when you're helping others, it's like, you don't even think about yourself anymore. You're just thinking about other people. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I'm just sitting here like privately kind of chuckling because like you may have not been in AA, but you are very, very much living. It's so hard to be in recovery and not still be living the tenets of like AA, right? Which right. is, you know, accepting there's something outside of ourselves. There is a higher power of like being willing to admit to all of our mistakes and the crappy things that we have done to people throughout life. And then, you know, the very last one is like, we are out there serving, being of service. To other people we're trying to help other people in their own recovery in their own enlightenment or anything of that nature um and yeah i mean i i, I love that what you do is built out of your same thing i sunshine readings would not exist today if i wasn't four months into my my own sobriety and going how in the world do i go to church without having a church that i believe in right and so I started to go online and offer readings. That's so for awesome. free. Once a week I would go online and, and that's, that's how it was born was helping me stay sober. Wow. And I, and it kind of, so before like long time ago, cause we were conditioned, Oh, psychic is not real. This, 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 that. No, I believe it's real. You don't think like Carrie, <laughs> that movie Carrie with Stephen King, that's a true story. <laughs> People can do things like this. I mean, Stranger Things, I think it's the same thing. True story. Actually, a lot of the movies are like true stories. It's just kind of, <laughs> I <Yeah>. always feel. Hollywood <laughs> loves theatrics. <laughs> right. And so, but I'm always saying, where do they get the idea from then? You know, it has to have existed. Who's going to be the example of it? You know, and that's why I believe like, oh, the psychics. I'm like, I love psychics. Because I mean, I've never actually had a reading done myself, but I so appreciate the gift it's like wow who can do that i can't do that yet i'm sure i can maybe if i tap into that more but uh i'm not there yet <laughs> but uh i do have some uh abilities where you know like so for example a friend's calling or about to call and i already knew that they were going to call and then it, you know like i was just thinking about my cat that ran off and i'm like where's ben at you know and then i look outside he's just across your house but then I turned back and like, where did he go? <laughs> so he's there, at least I know he's safe, but he needs to come back home. Uh, but little things like that, if I think it, and then it just happens. So it's kind of nice. No, it's, uh, you know, as I said, I, everyone has the abilities. Not everybody understands how to recognize them. And then to your point, even though you're recognizing them, you don't know how to strengthen them to be able to consistently leverage and use them in your day-to-day -day life. That's the, That's it. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> so, I mean, that's kind of the beautiful thing because that's one of the things that I love to do. I teach people how to do that. You mentioned, you know, I've created a school uh, called Illuminate and that's the whole purpose of that school is to allow people to really embrace their own gifts to explore like, you know, magic and ritual and, and how to be able to leverage and use that, you know, to improve and change their life and even to step into healing modalities. Right. I never, if you would have, if you would have asked me in 2020, when I, you know, first started, I never ever um, would have told you, I would have like claimed the title of a healer. Wouldn't have been a, you know, Reiki master, none of this kind of stuff. But like my journey has taken me down the path of, I'd have a client and I would, We'd explore something and I'm like, my guides are literally saying like, you can't leave them like that. You've got to help them. You've got to do more. And I'm going, what do I do? And they're like, heal them. And I'm like, what do you mean heal them? And they're like, heal their energy, clear their energy, move their energy, repair their energy. And so I'm like, okay. And so lo and behold, I found myself a certified Reiki master. <laughs> That is awesome. And can we talk a little bit about that? Because I am a certified massage therapist, but I've never practiced Reiki before, but I know some people who have done that. So can you explain what Reiki is? Um, yeah. So I'm going to go back. My guides are kind of giving me the example of, you said it was your son that could see this look? Oh, it was my son's father, my youngest son's father. That could see the like demon and the skeleton and everything. Yes, and auras. Right. So in the auras. And so what your son's father is, is seeing is energy. That is a representation of your energetic body. It's not your physical body. It's a representation of your energetic body. Mm. And so anybody that is familiar with energies or, you know, even as a massage therapist, you may have been taught about chakras or energy points, you know? And so, um, as a, as a Reiki, uh, 
master, you learn techniques on how to move that energy, how to repair, how to fill it, how to, how to, how to even maybe block it. Um, and through that, because our energetic body is also a representation of how our physical or even our mental body is. Mm. Right. So you gave the example <laughs> that you had been jaundiced right? You weren't looking so well, your skin was probably impacted, all of that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah. The alcohol had dampened your energy and your physical body was representing that. Mm -hmm. So as a Reiki master, you go in and start learning how to heal and, and, and um, use energy to support people's mental and physical, as well as even potentially spiritual bodies. Um, so yeah, energy is, uh, and energy is also representative of our like emotions, mm -hmm. right? So every emotion has a certain vibration and that vibration is energy. So if you're super happy and uplifted and, and excited, your energy is going to look different than if you, you know, may have just, uh, you know, found out that, uh, this gig that you were going to get just fell through, right? You know, your energy may look lower because you're disappointed and sad. Yeah. But yeah, energy is, uh, you know, and I'll, I'll tell you this example because this is the second time they, they've shown it. Um, I can read an alcoholic's energy. So, you know, you say mask, right? You know, you've always, you've masked. And so a lot of alcoholics will mask in social environments, especially one that they can't drink in. Right. Right. And so I told you I'm a, uh, the child of an alcoholic. I went no contact with my parents over a year and a half ago and saw him again for the first time this month. And my dad walked in. My dad's not supposed to drink. He's actually a heart transplant patient. Mm. Not supposed to drink at all. And he walks in and I'm looking at his energy and he's trying to tell me, no, he's not drinking still. And I'm like, mm -mm. like, I can, I can just see it. It's, it's got this, wow. yeah, it, you know, the, the, the whole thing kind of gets like really muted and gross. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's like, everything's grayed, like healthy energy looks really vibrant and it moves and it's just, yeah, it was very sludgy and yeah. It, so energy is a, a huge deal. And yes, I, I mean, as an alcoholic, you're like, there's no faster way to kill your, your, your own energy than to literally drown it in alcohol. Right. You know, and I was going to say something about gray. Gray popped into my head and then you went ahead and clarified it. I was, I, I was thinking in my head like, oh, I'm sure it looks like grayish, mucky, like mud and dirt. I don't know if you ever seen that movie Silent Hill or play the video game uh, Silent Hill. <laughs> yes. 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 Like the upside down world or whatever is all gray and mucky. That's like probably what yes. it looks like. Yeah. yeah very much so. mm -hmm. Now you have some other gifts as well. Like I was just asking like, what don't you do sunshine? <laughs> You do a lot. So you are also a medium. So do you actually speak or see the unliving? Yeah. So um, non, you, you could kind of think of it as any type of non-corporal being, any type of non-human body or physical body. Uh, yes, it can be seen. And so this can be actual like, you know, ancestors or folks that have crossed over. It can be like long-term spirit guides, like, you know, spirits that have actually traveled with you through many, many lifetimes. Um, to your point, it can also be aliens. So, um, it is not, it, you are not, it's not an uncommon statement where, you know, don't feel like you're of this earth. That is actually something I hear pretty often, um, with clients, um, that they get that feeling. And then, you know, of course I will then bear witness to why, you know, because they, aliens love to show up for me, like, and they wave because I'm like, I please, I'm like, I can't do this. I was like, it's one thing to have ghosts. It's one thing to have ancestors. A whole other thing to see an alien. <laughs> you know what? But I, this is funny because I actually love the topic of aliens. <laughs> I love it too. I'm, they find it humorous because they, they, you know, I can see them and th like, they just like wave and they're like, yep, we're here. And I'm just like, oh God, not again. <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, you know, and yeah, because they, uh, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with them or anything like that. But I'm just like, this is just such a weirder thing to me than ghosts. It's so <laughs> weird than compared to ghosts. I'm like, ghosts. Okay. Got it. It was a human that once was here. This alien was never a human body, but okay. Now I can see you. All right. <laughs> so what did they look like? <laughs> um, they presented themselves in different formats to me. Um, 
a lot of times when I've asked them, I said, why, why are you different? They're like, we show up however the individual that they're connected to. So they don't just like wander. It's not like they're just hanging out in the world. They typically show up with another human where they themselves are trying, they're actually helpers. Yeah. Right. So they are very much so helping. So they'll make an agreement to help this human soul, like learn things or gain knowledge or, you know, things of that nature. And so they're like, I show up however this person imagines me. Um, and so sometimes it's been just a, a, like a grade kind of like, almost like a sheet, you Mm -hmm. know, kind of like a, um, sometimes it's been the greeny kind of alien looking, um, the most common though, is just this kind of translucent type of, um, uh, just blob, so to speak. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. They'll just kind of like sit there like that. So, um, yeah, it's. It's been very amusing. I never expected that. I had a client, I do this low cost event, usually every other month where um, it's like $5 and you can get a seat, you know, and um, I have somebody I'd never had show up one time. And of course that there was the first time this was like, I don't even know, two years ago. And he's like, so I think I have an alien around me and I want you to tell me if you can see him. And all of a sudden there it was and it shows up and I'm like, oh my God. (laughs) um I'm like I need a moment I've never seen an alien before uh yeah so (laughs) that's so cool though you know (laughs) I haven't seen it myself but I I definitely I mean I I already know there's others that exist out there and I've heard and I've researched as well that they are here to help of course there's ones that are bad (laughs) you know humans are worse (laughs) right right? yes the worst we are we are not very kind to our our own uh you know our own uh brethren what i 100 percent 100 percent straight evil like i come I from know, ex- like, from experience okay yeah, like we're we're worried about aliens but yet we also have kids that really don't feel safe going to school i'm like mm-hmm. or maybe our maybe we should focus our right you know, attention in a different place than aliens but i don't know Exactly. And I know um, you say you you talk to you talk to people and one particular person is one of us, my biggest idol, <laughs> my most my 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 mentor, my guide, my everything. And that's Jesus, right? Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Can um, you it's... please just talk a little bit about that? Because, you know, I, I, I... the door, but there is a picture of him back here. <laughs> little black and white photo oh yeah 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 um (laughs) yeah that one was not even expected um and I've had a couple of conversations with him since uh but that one was I was in a very intense spiritual program last year and we had this very uh like you didn't know what you were getting yourself into it was like very um you know kind of big question mark you just had to trust in the, that was very big trust thing. And so we show up at this one weekend, it was like four weekends throughout the year. And the one weekend we show up and we're like in the mountains somewhere and they proceed, they have us like proceed down and singing this song up to like the, the venue that they're going to start this ritual. And as we, we get in there, all of a sudden I start getting visions of Jesus walking the road to you know, perdition or whatever, like to being, you know, crucified. And I, at this point, I have no clue what else, but this, these are the visions that are happening. And I'm like, oh my God. And so then they go and they have a sit with their like eyes closed for a while. And so here he goes, he sits right next to me. And and so he shows up and I, I proceed to have this whole conversation, like with him, you know, as I'm sitting here waiting and, you know, we're talking about various different things um, he's explaining like, you know, cause I'm asking, you know, I'm, and I'm like, I'm, I'm like, what was this like? I'm like, you literally willingly walk to your own death. You were, you know, and I'm watching and I'm feeling this experience of him being whipped and beaten and spit on. And like, and I'm even, you know, very interesting insights around Mary Magdalene shows up and she's basically saying like their relationship. And this, this is going to be very controversial here. Are we ready for this? Yes. She and him proceed to share that he had her 
whip him, to prepare him to sustain the whipping and the torture throughout this walk. And so she's telling me how hard it was for her to do this, to like literally inflict this pain on this man she loved. Mm -hmm. Right. And he, you know, he's saying like, I was so blessed that she did this. Mind you, I'm still sitting there. I have no clue what this ritual is that they're, they're putting me through. And like, we, we walk up, I'm watching him like walk all the way up to the hill. And and then I proceed to go back. Well, they had a stand against a cross. We had a theoret, like a theoretical cruci- crucifixion wow. done to us. I, I'm like, what? Wow. Right? What? And so then they, after this, we had six hours of silence we were basically instructed to go about ourselves in six hours of silent noble silence of no conversation and so jesus and i spent the rest of the afternoon together wow is there any <laughs> did he give us any give you any other insight or anything and how you know I, we've i've actually like i said i've talked with him a couple of times and there's been various different things and you know <sighs> I actually have a client that's very strongly connected to him. Same thing, like mentor, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Very, very, very strong relationship with them. And so I have a lot of conversations and, you know, the biggest thing that he's told to me is, it's kind of like where, where we've talked about with the recovery, right? Mm -hmm. These are individual journeys. It's about exploring these things for ourselves. It's learning these things for ourselves. It's not for somebody else to dictate. It's not for somebody else to tell us what we're supposed to do. And so like a lot of the conversation is very similar to what, you know, one of my favorite movies growing up was Stigmata, right? Because, you know, yeah. the, the, I think it's, I forget which, which book of the gospel that they had found that had been buried by the church. But, you know, in one state of this is like, you know, split a piece of wood, there I am right? Pick up a rock. I, I, I exist as well. Like I, God is within every single one of us. And that, that is this message that Jesus was here to be able to share. That is the message. That is why he, you know, proceeded to go down saying like, I am no better than any one person. I will be cre-, like, because it's within all of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so a lot of what he'd shared was just love is the biggest message, right? right? Um, I have a, you know, an occult background and in the, um, you know, he's got a bad rap, but Alistair Crowley came up with a religion called Thelema that has, you know, love, uh, love is the law, love under will, Mm -hmm. which is basically saying like, if you are living this life with love always being in the forefront, love of ourselves, love of other people, love of humanity, love of the gifts that, you know, mother nature has provided or given to us, then life will be beautiful. Right. And as long as you are doing that love aligned with what, what you are driven to do, what your higher power drives you to do, what your purpose is, my gosh, mm-hmm. like magic begins to happen. And so, you know, Jesus has reiterated this message to me over and over again, many times in conversations and has reminded that every single book, every single thing that has been written has always been written through the lens of another human being, Mm -hmm. right? right? To take anything that you read with a grain of salt and ask yourself whether or not it's true for you. Yes. And that's why I always had a hard time because my husband uh, is a Christian because uh, I remarried now and I met him through a uh, street ministry. We used to go feed the homeless and everything through our church. And um, and he swears by the Bible. But I was thinking, like, I mean, that's not all it can be. <laughs> I mean, and this has been rewritten many times. I mean, like, you remember the, the, the game we used to play as children, telephone, where we oh, say God. something yep. and then they, and yep. it's the, the last message, the last person who gets it, it's like not even close to whatever yep. the first person had said originally. And so I, I always, that's why I always pray to myself and to God. I'm just like, please show me what I need to see when I'm reading scripture or when I'm getting a message. Or if Mm -hmm. I'm watching even a movie, like, what am I learning from this? Please guide me. Like, what was the purpose of this? I'm experiencing this right now. Why? I always ask. (laughs) I always need help because I can't do it by myself. (laughs) No, I think that's, I think that's beautiful. And I think that's an amazing, uh, you know, practice. And for anybody that, you know, is listening to this and missed what she just said, rewind and listen to it again. 
because that is so important and potent in our own spiritual journey. And that's, that's a lot of what, you know, you asked, what did you, that was the message that he said. It's like, it is up to you to create that relationship with God, your higher self, your higher power, your creator, whatever it is that you want to define that is, they will give you the messages. Great. The books are, are fabulous for reference. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have a whole library of books that I've read. I don't accept any of them as a truth, but I do accept them as reference because what I'll often be drawn to is I'll hear in my head, go look in the library. And so I'll go look and I'll, and I'll ask the question, what book? And they'll show me the book. And then I will literally open it up and I'll say, tell me what page and literally exactly where they take me will have some message for me. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and so this is why I, you know, I love, like, I never would have been able to do any of that. I would never have been able to trust that. I, if I, if I was still drinking. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. Cause I feel like a crazy person most of the time <laughs> I do. And I love it. I don't mind it. I, you know, um, I have no problem with that, but man, is it, it's like, where did this come from? Like, I can't explain that. I have no clue. Right. But that's what I was told to do. Yeah. That's where I was told to go. That's what I was told to say. I'm like, I don't, you know, and I mean, the amount of, um, are you, are you a Brene Brown, Brene Brown fan? I don't even know who that is. Oh my God. You should look her up. You'd love her. <laughs> um, she is also, um, uh, many, 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 many years sober, but she is a, um, a research, uh, psychologist, pretty positive research psychologist. And she has, um, a book called like, uh, oh, it's something about the heart. It's something, but it's all about how people experience emotion. And, and, and she's, she has a, she's on Netflix too. There's actually a series that she goes through and does videos of the, her latest book, oh. but she talks about how all of these different emotions that people have. And there are two that she explains, she says, which is wonderment and awe, hmm. right? It's just this feeling of like, right. And so like being in recovery, being on a spiritual path, believing in a higher power, listening to our guides or whoever is divinely guiding us means like you literally are walking around in life like this all the time. Yes. Eyes wide open, this delighted grin on your face, this warmth in your heart, just like, oh, I just love living so much. Isn't it amazing and beautiful and incredible? I just can't wait to just do this all day, every day. Yes. Like heaven on earth. <laughs> exactly like heaven on earth and you are not the first person in recovery that has stated as such like that to me that is the exact feeling that it is 100%. yes sobriety is a beautiful thing because then you get to be who you truly are and it is a beautiful person in there <laughs> you are a beautiful person it's like you just wait and see trust the process yes yeah. Trust the process one day at a time, one hour at a time, one minute, however you've got to do it. And it goes back. You ask like, what's advice? Like if you are willing to admit that you are struggling with alcohol use, right. And you are willing to ask for help. There are people that are going to be out there that want to help you and want to see you succeed. And you may have never experienced that before. You will have a stranger, right? A stranger, nobody else may have ever believed in you, ever supported you. And you will have a stranger that has gone through their own recovery that will be your biggest champion and your biggest cheerleader ever. Um, and it it can change your life. It can it can completely change how you experience the world around you. Absolutely. That is so beautiful, sunshine. Oh my goodness, I could go on with this conversation. <laughs> no, I want to know where can people find you? Sign up for your your what was it called again? The the magical psychic. Uh... <laughs> yeah, so all sorts of great stuff that I'm always doing. One of the biggest programs that I offer is Illuminate, the unschool of magical psychic arts. And and as we've been evolving and people have been talking about it, uh, I'm I'm actually on the verge of changing the name to Illuminate, the unschool of witchcraft, because it is it's resonating with folks. I I've been kind of like, okay, I don't have a problem with that if that's what you want. Um, all sorts of other things, but you can always find me on the website, sunshinereadings.com. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, I always love to tell people that I do answer all my own emails still. And so you can always email me sunshine at sunshinereadings.com and I'll get that. And I love it. Um, it's one of my most like delightful, like 
channels to communicate because we can just go back and forth and nobody feels pressured with real-time communication, right? Yeah. Um, you can always catch me on Facebook, which is uh, Sunshine Readings Online. I'm on Instagram, sunshine underscore readings. We're on Pinterest. Uh, I believe my team has even fired up a TikTok, though I keep telling them like, please don't ask me to go on that because I don't think I'd ever come back out of it. Like I'm a recovering addict. <laughs> oh, it's fun. I know. I love TikTok, but I was able to like, I go on there and I'm just like, people do readings on there too. You know, they have their tarot cards and everything. And there's this one that I like, kind of follow. I, I don't forget her name, but I swear every time I see her, I feel like that message for me. I'm like, oh, every single time. <laughs> But it just pops up like randomly too. It's like not I'm not searching for her. Just oh, there she is. <laughs> Very yeah. interesting stuff. So I I do the take this. Algorithm's good. So you know I told them if they want to do that, go ahead and just tell me what they need to make it happen. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're also software, <laughs> right? You do everything. Yeah, oh, my, yeah this... my my corporate background. I've been helping uh, companies. Uh, build software, marketing technology, um, or operations for the last like 25 years. Yeah. That is so awesome. Well, thank yeah, you I've, so much. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed every bit of it. So. Yes. And also, is there anything else you would like to share to the audience? You know, I, I, there's nothing new. I mean, I'll just say it again. Don't, don't be shy to ask for help. I know it is sometimes the hardest and you know, so many of us that are before we step into recovery, we're dealing with so much shame and guilt of like, how did I get to this place? How did I allow myself like so much and just know that asking for help is a sign of strength. And it is the most loving and kind thing you could ever do for yourself in that moment. It really is. So beautiful. You know. I love that. Yes, ask for help. And that's what I had to do. I'm sure you had to do that too. Oh, yeah. 90 and 90 <laughs> days. I went to 90 AA meetings in 90 days. So, yeah, I, I asked for help 90 days in a row. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Sunshine. Keep shining. <laughs> thank you.